Azeem, what do you want to see out of Steve tonight? Like I always tell you, man, I want to see him stay smart. I want to see him shoot his shots, get off, and get out of the way. Big height differential here. How do you cut that off? Big size differential. We take angles on this guy, and we surprise him with our foot movement. Thanks, Desi. All right, thanks, Chris. And here comes Steve Cunningham. BJ, this is only his third fight as a heavyweight. We know what great success he had twice being a world champ as a cruiserweight. Yeah, he's got the pedigree, Kenny. We've talked about that. He's beaten three of the current cruiserweight champions now. Guillermo Jones, he's also beaten uh, Marco Huck, and then he's also beaten Christoph Ladarczyk. Very impressive as a cruiserweight. The question tonight is, moving up from the cruiserweight to the heavyweight division, does he carry the power? This is the first real heavyweight in Tyson Fury that he's fighting. Even though he's faced Thomas Ademek and Jason Gavin, they weren't 21st century heavyweights like Tyson Fury is. And we're going to find out very soon if he's got enough to keep Tyson Fury honest. I liked when you stood up in that inside the ring. And you talked about that yesterday. We were talking for Fury to be so much taller, he only has a three-inch reach advantage. How big a reach advantage is that? It's not as big as you think, honestly, because three inches can be made up very easily with foot movement, with body movement, with angles, like Brother Nazim Richardson said. That's what they're looking for tonight, to cut off that reach. Let's check in now once again with Chris. Clifton, what do you want to see out of Tyson tonight? Nice fast stands, nice fast, nice fast feet, good head movement, and, and just relax and get the job done. Steve, Steve's an accomplished boxer. Do you feel comfortable if this fight goes the distance? Without doubt. Without doubt, he ain't gonna go the distance. I don't think he'll go. If it goes the distance, he'll win it. He'll win it. Thanks, Clifton. And there is Luke Tyson Fury. Yes, Tyson, named for the champ Mike, has a championship name. He is a champ of Great Britain, fourth in the world in the WBC, sixth in the WBO, nine in the IBF, coming to the U.S. for the first time. And he said he only wanted to do it because it was here at Madison Square Garden. He wanted to do it on the biggest stage in America to make his debut for a guy who comes off to some as arrogant, but many times he is self-deprecating and funny and amusing, and he has his uh, bagpipe section with him that's come over from New Jersey to lead him out. I found him, you know, before the fighter meetings, I found him very arrogant as well. But sitting down with Tyson, he's a very focused young man, very charismatic. He knows what he wants, and, uh, you know, he knows how to hype a fight up. And he respects Steve Cunningham. He made it very clear in the meetings yesterday. He knows. Look, Steve Cunningham is a two-time world champion, not for nothing, because he knows how to fight, he knows how to box, and we respect that, and we prepared 100% for a very, uh, very good fighter in Steve Cunningham. You know, something interesting about Tyson, they named him Tyson after Mike Tyson, like you mentioned, but when he was born, he was only one pound. And his father said he was a fighter his entire life. It just seemed to work with the name Tyson, and uh, here he is 24 years later fighting for a number two IBF eliminator uh, in boxing's biggest stage. Ian Cunningham, the winner, will be the number two man moving closer to a shot they both hope at Vladimir Klitschko. Now let's look at the tail of the tape. Biggest is the six-inch height advantage of Fury and the age advantage a dozen years younger than that of Cunningham and 254 pounds to 210. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref or doctor can stop the fight. Fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The fight is official after four. This one's scheduled for 12. Let's go now to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, USA, main events and Hennessy Sports are proud to present the NBC Sports Fight Night featured bout. This is a special IBF elimination contest as the world's two greatest allies, the UK and the USA, are opponents in the ring tonight. 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission Chairperson Melvina Lathan. The three judges at ringside scoring will be Glenn Feldman, John Potteray, and Valeska Roldan. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, referee Big Eddie Cotton. And now, the officials are ready, the fighters are ready. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, live across the UK and live courtesy of NBC Sports across the USA, 
ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold, orange, and black, officially weighing in at 210 pounds and standing six feet three inches. His professional record, 25 victories, including 12 knockouts with five defeats. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA, the two-time cruiserweight champion of the world, Steve, USA's Cunningham. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with green, his official weight, 254 pounds, and he stands six feet nine inches. His professional record is a perfect one, standing at 20 fights, 20 victories, including 14 knockouts from Manchester, United Kingdom, the undefeated heavyweight contender, Tyson Fury. All right, boxers, you both receive my instructions in the dressing room, obey my commands, and protect yourself at all times. I expect a good, clean fight. Let's touch gloves. Touch them up. Mr. Cotton. Yes, Mr. Cotton, move yes. Yes. And Tyson Fury, flamboyant at times, controversial at times, a smart guy. He knows what he's doing in there, I believe. You know, we're going to find out real quick, Kenny. I'm talking about the build-up, okay? <laughs> the build-up, that was the perfect thing. He knows he, there was chance of USA when Steve Cunningham came into the ring, and Tyson Fury, I believe, playing off that. That was good, but Steve around, Cunningham Steve. won't be intimidated around, by those Steve. types of tactics. He's been in foreign countries. He's fought Marco Huck in Germany, Christoph Ladarczyk in Poland. He's fought guys all over in their home territories, and uh, I don't think Steve will be intimidated. Tyson's got to go out and put the pressure on him and convince Steve that's the only way. Round one underway. It is scheduled for 12. And you see the height differential. Tyson's got that left hand down, keeping the left hand down. It's hard to see the jab when it's coming from that angle, so Steve's going to have to find a way to counter that jab early. And a 44-pound difference in weight, although this is the heaviest we've seen Steve Cunningham at 210. Nice left jab by Steve Cunningham. You saw the first punchy shot. It landed, and he's got to work in there. That's, I think, something Tyson Fury thinks that Steve Cunningham is going to move around the ring a lot, run. Steve said, hey, we got to go in there and mix it up a little bit. And uh, I think he has to early to let Tyson know, hey, I'm in this fight. Fury working on the jab early. He talked about how much better his jab has gotten in the last year and a half. But important to note that his uncle Peter, because of visa problems, is not in his corner. The man he attributes getting him in great shape over this last year and a half. Clifton Mitchell in the corner for Tyson Fury tonight. You know, his jab is improved. He's, he's, he's much faster. He's, Tyson's a much better fighter than he was uh, three years ago. And he told us that very openly and very candidly in the fighter meeting yesterday. He said, you know what? I didn't really care three years ago. I went into fights. I wasn't in shape. I just went in and uh, used my raw talent and determination. But now I'm taking my career seriously, and now I'm getting properly prepared for these fights. Good shot by Steve Cunningham there. Cunningham missing with that right. Very fast pace for a first round in a heavyweight fight. Both guys shooting a lot of punches. And this is a fight that plays into the hands of Steve Cunningham because he's a very conditioned fighter. And Fury's condition improving so much that he has been above the average of a heavyweight of 46 thrown punches around to 64 over his last three fights. So he's a much more active fighter now that he's trimmed down about 25 pounds in his last three fights. Good jabs to the head and to the body by Cunningham. Fury also doing very good work with his own jab. This is a very even round. You see the red marks on the stomach of Tyson Fury already from the jabs of uh, Stephen Cunningham that he's landed to the body. Fury now taunting him, saying, come on. Fury's talking to him there, saying, listen, come on, come on, that ain't nothing, that ain't nothing. 
Fury is definitely a showman, but he's landed some good punches too in this first round, Kenny. And he landed some good ones right there. So Fury, part boxer, part WWE entertainer here in this first round. Round one coming to an end. It's scheduled for 12. Tyson Fury shoving Cunningham. And there he is at the start with the touching of the gloves and the taunting of Cunningham. Hasn't worked so far, but there's a long way to go. And there's a look in the corner of Tyson Fury. And round one, BJ, at the end of it here. Just an intimidation factor. Fury saying, listen, I'm the bigger guy. I'm going to come out and control you and dominate you. And he's letting Steve know, listen, it's going to be a long night for you, Steve. Round two underway in that first round according to copy of Box Fury. Oh, he's not down. He's not down. Cunningham has flown Fury. That's the punch right there. Steve Cunningham is looking to land that overhand right. Tyson Fury got too aggressive and got caught with a big shot. Steve Cunningham has got Tyson Fury in a lot of trouble here, Kenny. And Cunningham now, even more aggressive, coming right back with the right. Fury's in trouble, Ken. He's still wobbly here, and Steve Cunningham knows what he's got to do now. And leaning right against this rope. The rope is helping him out at this moment. Fury's still trying to get his legs together here, and sometimes it's tough. When you hurt a big man like that, it takes him a while to get it back together, so Steve has got to press the action. A big man that hasn't felt a sting like he just felt from Cunningham. And he went down hard, Kenny. That was a huge shot. It was timber when he hit the canvas. And that's impressive because the question was, does Steve Cunningham have a chance in this fight without that one-punch knockout power? And he just showed he's taken a bit of power into the heavyweight division. No more taunting or laughing from Tyson Fury. He came here wanting to face his toughest opponent, and he is. And Tyson Fury realizes he's got a real fight in front of him now. Maybe this isn't the soft puncher he thought it was, and he just caught Steve Cunningham with a nice right hand there, and Steve's got to be careful. And Fury bouncing back with that right. Great shot by Fury. You see he's starting to get his legs under him a little more. He's still a six foot nine, 255 pound guy, and Steve has got to be careful and can't come in recklessly. As Cunningham's corner said, size alone is a threat anytime. But Cunningham cutting him down here in that strong right in this uh, second round. Beautiful overhand right, and all that was Kenny was timing. Tyson pushed out a little lazy jab, and Steve had it timed perfectly and caught him with a beautiful overhand right and really showed that he can hurt the bigger man. And that's always the question when the little man fights the big man, is can the little man hurt the big man? And we just saw evidence of that. Especially one of the things that you were talking about yesterday. Again, nice shot there by Fury. Is it Cunningham, even with these world championships, not known as a knockout guy? That's the question we're gonna find out. When David Hay, when Thomas Adamick, when Jonathan Banks, they all went up to heavyweight. They all had very good power as cruiserweights. Steve Cunningham wasn't known for his power, but we're seeing right here that he carries a bit of punch in the heavyweight division. Tyson using his forearms to bully the littler guy here. Great round for Stephen Cunningham. Round two, coming to an end. Steve Cunningham will not be bullied. Tyson Fury walked immediately to his corner at the end of this round as compared to the end of the first. Let's go back and take a look at the start of this second round. We see Tyson Fury lazy with the left hook, just getting a little careless, a little reckless. Steve Cunningham timed it perfectly, landed an overhand right on the top of Fury's head that visibly hurt him and shook him. Fury stayed down for seven or eight seconds, a veteran move to kind of get his composure back and make sure he didn't fall before he uh, before he fell. There's Libby Cunningham there, <laughs> reacting to the Steve Cunningham overhand right and uh, showing a bit of enthusiasm there. Her husband's in this fight. Yes. Manager and promoter, as well as his wife, Livy, here cheering him on. Whenever he gets to do, stab him. Whenever he touches him, he's 
And what Brother Nazim Richardson saying right there, whenever he moves and dips around, stab him. He's saying, stick that left jab to the body. Stick it in there to stabilize him and find him, and then come up with that overhand right again to the head. But he wants Steve to stick that left jab in the body to stabilize the bigger and slippier, uh, more slippery, big right hand from Tyson Fury. And Fury comes out strong here in the third round. And he caught, and the referee separates him. Big right hand from Tyson Fury to start this third round. Fury wasting no time. He doesn't want to be caught again by Cunningham. Nice right counter uppercut. You see Steve lunge in with the right hand a little bit. Fury step back and shoot that short right uppercut. Very nice to see a big man pull off that kind of counter. Unofficially, Cunningham in the lead, according to our expert here, Larry Hazard. Of course, that was a big second round with the knockdown that Cunningham registered. Yeah, it's so early in the fight, only two rounds in. Cunningham's got a one-point lead on my scorecard. There's still nine rounds up the fight, though, so a lot, of, a lot of the fight left. But you gotta like the temperament of Fury. He gets knocked down in the second round, comes right out the beginning of the third round, lands a big left hook right hand that really got the attention of Cunningham, and uh, he's reminding the smaller man that he is indeed the smaller man. And again, coming back with combinations, but sliding in left was Cunningham. Action along the ropes now. Let's check in with Chris. Nazim, what are you seeing out there? A big man who really is just winning fights because he's big, but as soon as you hit him back with something, he got a problem. But he's very big. And if the ref let him grab, he can win fights because he's going to lay on you till you get tired. Thanks, Nazim. All right, Chris Cunningham trying to go back to work, and Tyson Fury is standing with him. Good shots by Steve Cunningham on the inside. And what we see Steve starting to do now, Tyson's coming forward, he's being aggressive, he's winging two or three shots, but he's getting a little careless. Steve is waiting in that defensive posture, waiting for Tyson to make contact and coming back with one counter shot that's, uh, that's catching Tyson. Steve's looking to catch Tyson in between those sloppy combinations. Tyson's got to get back to the educated and disciplined left jab and set punches up off of his left jab. Cunningham dodges that right. And once again, they're separated. Good nice left. Shot. Right into the ribs. Cunningham digging in on Fury. Good body shot. And Cunningham's got to continue to mix it up. He's got to work up and down. Even though it looks like the head is such a hard target, he's got to go to the body because if he goes to the body, he will find the head. And you see Tyson Fury, he's, he's, he's getting physical with Steve on the inside. He's pushing him back, he's laying on him. Nazim Richardson told us about that yesterday and Steve has got to make sure he gets out of the way on those, uh, those combinations. Round three coming to an end. Welcome back to Fight Night, where Steve Cunningham is in the ring with something of a heavy heart tonight. His seven-year-old daughter, Kennedy, who has battled heart problems her entire life, was admitted to a hospital on Friday with heart and lung problems. Libby Cunningham, Steve's wife, says Kennedy was crying on the phone because she couldn't be here tonight, but she will be watching on NBC in her hotel room. Thank you, Chris, and we say hello to her. And our best wishes to Steve and Libby and the Cunningham family as round four begins. Tyson Fury in the white with the green. Undefeated, making his U.S. debut against Steve Cunningham. Winner of this fight will move to number two in the IBF heavyweight rankings, getting closer to a shot at the champ, Vladimir Klitschko. So far, a knockdown back in the second round by Steve Cunningham. And Cunningham going to work again, and Fury is just reaching to hang on right now. Fury's hurt. He got caught with a good right hand by Steve, and he fell in. He was definitely, definitely hurt. He's warning him right now for holding on on the inside, and this is going to play into Steve Cunningham's hands. If Fury is not allowed to hold on the inside, it's going to free up Steve's hands to make, make contact and land those punches. But he's already got Fury's attention with that straight right hand in the beginning of this fourth round. He's much, shown he can hurt the bigger man. Much quicker on the punch, and much stronger, perhaps, than some people expected from Cunningham. 
a lot of times these cruiserweights are so sucked down at 200 pounds that when they actually stop dehydrating themselves and shrinking themselves down, they find they've got quite a bit of power when they make the transition to heavyweight. That's what Steve Cunningham has found out about himself tonight. Cunningham talking about being smart in his training now. He was never over 200 pounds when he fought his cruiserweight. Had no trouble making weight there, and he's enjoyed this ability now to carry around 205-210. And weighing in at 210 for this one. Steve Cunningham was in the Navy. He's very, very disciplined. When he was an amateur fighter, he was the Navy champion. He has forced himself and trained himself to be so committed and disciplined to never go over 200 pounds. And it was dehydrating and malnourishing his body. He looks much better at 210, Kenny. Much more filled out and much stronger, obviously, from the punches he's been throwing to Tyson Fury. And this reminds me of the Evander Holyfield Riddick Bo fight. The first fight, Evander Holyfield wasn't able to shake up Bo. The second fight, he was, and that was the difference. I see this fight playing out very similar to that fight. Cunningham being able to hurt Tyson Fury is the, the big, big difference here. We didn't know if that was going to be possible, Kenny. And Steve falling in a little bit there, and Tyson trying to step to the side to show, hey, I'm not the only one holding. That's what Tyson needs to get back to. His jab. jab. He was using the jab effective early. Well, he's physically strong. Even if he's not, you know, a huge puncher for his weight, he's still 255 pounds, and just blocking those punches can wear Steve down over the course of 12 rounds. Final seconds, fourth round. Separated once again. Good body shot by Tyson. Once again, Fury getting in a nice shot there. Good round for Cunningham, though, as well. Take a look at the action, and there's that right by Cunningham. Former cruiserweight showing powers a heavyweight to the delight of wife Libby. Win your round. You better box. Use your jab, win your round. Grand club, open up. Keep your legs out, relax. Keep your legs out, relax. Keep your legs out, relax. Nazim Richardson, the trainer of Steve Cunningham, with instructions between rounds as we go to round five, is scheduled for 12. Tyson Fury, the tall man there in the white trunks with the green, making his U.S. debut against Steve Cunningham, the two time cruiserweight champ, now in his third fight as a heavyweight. And you see the physical presence of Tyson. It's tough, it's very tough. And just to keep the bigger man off of him because Tyson's so physical, he's so big, he's a physical guy, it makes it tough. And here the referee's taking a point away from Tyson Fury. It looks like for holding, I didn't see it right there, Kenny. He had been warned before about holding, now he loses a precious point as this fight goes along. And that was a nice fight by Fury. And Fury switching to Southpaw just momentarily. He has actually fought and won, fighting the majority of a fight left-handed. Yeah, you're talking about the fight with Martin Rogan, the European champion at the time, a very good fighter. And uh, Fury stayed Southpaw the whole fight and defeated uh, Rogan. That was April a year ago. Let's check in on the corner of uh, Tyson Fury with Chris. Clifton, what are you seeing out there right now? I see, I see Steve getting a bit tired now. But Tyson just needs to stay to the game plan. And don't let the occasion get to him, that's all. Just keep on the jab, keep on the jab. Now, Cunningham's starting to, starting to wilt a little bit, which we thought he would. He took a knockdown, he took some heavy shots there. Are you worried about the type of shots he's taking? Does he, do I look worried now? Look at him, he's, he's there. If, he, if he, he had his opportunity in round one, was it? That's him done now, like for me. Thanks, Clifton. It was round two, actually, where Fury got the knockdown. Clifton Mitchell in the corner because Peter Fury, Tyson's uncle, who he gives so much credit to for getting him in shape and getting him to this point in his career over the last year and a half. Had visa problems and is not here today in New York. And Tyson's getting a little frustrated right now because he's trying to fight and he's having troubles getting separation and distance on the inside when him and Steve are in the center of the ring. Well, Cunningham's not giving him uh, any chance with that reach advantage, is he? He's going in on him mostly. 
And you see when Tyson frees those hands up, it's giving Steve problems. He's a physically big, strong guy. And Steve is not used to being in there, banging it out with a guy who's 255 pounds. And that's he's, a nice right by Tyson Fury. He's doing good work here. He's laying on him there, and that's what they talked about. When Fury lays on his opponents like that, he wears him out over a 12-round fight. He knows how to use his body frame. He weighs 254 pounds. Cunningham weighs 210. And you multiply that, Kenny, over 12 rounds, and you got a tired 210-pound fighter if the, if the fight continues to take this form. But you see, Tyson's not doing anything special in there. He's just walking to Steve. He's landing good, cuffing punches on the inside, and he's actually getting himself back in this round, back in this fight, because Steve had been doing very well the last couple rounds. And that was a nice right by Fury once again. Fury's strongest round. Round five coming to an end, but Fury losing a point in that round for a headbutt. Fury and Cunningham fighting on. Tyson Fury regaining his confidence after landing 23 punches to 14 for Cunningham in that fifth round. And let's listen in between rounds. This is your, this is your moment in Madison Square. It ain't about the bags in my fault. It's about being smart. You already see you can beat this guy. And that's about whether or not you let him in a fight. When you touch him, you gotta move your hands. You can't wrap your hands around him. Yeah. Steve Cunningham's corner. Cunningham has fought two other times at Madison Square Garden. As you see, his trainer, Nazim Richardson, working right there, doing a little repair on the left glove. And this is the first time, though, that Cunningham has fought as a main event. And Tyson Fury is working up the crowd while that's going on. This is a Hall of Fame trainer, Nazim Richardson, for a reason. He saw Steve was a little shaken in the corner there. Tyson had a good round. He's a little shaken. And Nazim Richardson was taking his sweet time to put the tape around Steve's gloves, giving his fighter some extra time to rest. Veteran move and very smart. We're in round six, scheduled for 12. Now, Tyson's got a lot of confidence here, and unless Steve can do something to hurt him or shake him up again, I think it's going to be very difficult for Steve to keep the bigger man off him for the last six rounds. Tyson rediscovering his jab here in this fight. See, it's like Tyson's got it figured out now. He's going to cover up, he's going to get close, and he's going to use those short cupping shots on the inside to damage Steve because you can see in between the fifth and the sixth round that Steve was a little winded and a little exhausted and possibly a little hurt at the end of that last round. It's a battle of attrition. You've got a big guy against a little guy, and eventually, good right hand from Steve, but eventually if the big man continues to do the right things, the little man will falter. Steve's got to get back to that snapping left jab up and down. He can't push it out because it leaves him vulnerable to the Fury counters. He's got to snap it out there and keep his balance when he shoots it. And you see Tyson's guard up nice and high. It's really high. Steve's got to shoot that jab to the body to make sure and gain that respect because Tyson's ready for the, uh, the jab up top. See, total punches thrown. Cunningham, though, with the knockdown in this fight. Nice little short left uppercut by Steve, but he's having troubles keeping the bigger man off of him. And that's what it's going to come down to. Good right hand by Tyson. And Tyson Fury is cutting down this ring again on Cunningham. And here's the thing, you know, Tyson can take those punches from Steve and come back, but Steve doesn't have the body frame to be able to take those punches from Tyson all night. So he's got to pick his shots and be careful when he decides to stand and trade with Fury because he doesn't have the same frame. Six cents difference in height, 44 pound difference in weight. The man in the white and green, Tyson Fury, is 6'9", 254 pounds. And once again, pushing the action against the ropes. Referee. Eddie Cotton separating him once again. And he gets his guard up quickly and is able to shield himself as Cunningham trying to slide in of jab. Cunningham's working here, but Kenny, I see the snap coming off Cunningham's punches. He's not setting his feet now because he has to move away from Fury. Fury's moving in. Cunningham's got to respect that and move. When he's moving, he's not able to set his feet and land the hard punches. And uh, it's taken away from his performance now, Kenny. He's, he's getting shaken up in there. 
final seconds of round six. Tyson Fury with a solid round once again. He and Cunningham fighting on now to the seventh. Tyson Fury trying to stay unbeaten in his U.S. debut against Cunningham. Guys, as we have seen, there's a lot of bravado in Tyson Fury. He's a confident guy who believes in himself, but two years ago, that wasn't the case. Fury says he didn't take boxing seriously. He says he partied, he drank heavily before some fights. He says an illness to his son, Prince, changed him, and connecting with his uncle, Peter Fury, has made him a more complete fighter. All right, thanks, Chris. His wife, Paris, here with him. They were high school sweethearts. Have two children now as round seven begins. Once again, Eddie Cotton, as he's done numerous times, separating Fury and Cunningham. Cunningham in the gold and orange. As you take a look there at Larry Hazard's unofficial scorecard. Glad to have Larry here with us on this fight night at NBC Sports. Tyson Fury at this stage, what are you seeing him in now, BJ, from when he was knocked down earlier in this fight? Oh, he's made a complete rebound. He got a point taken away in round five. He wasn't able to, uh, you know, pull away on the scorecard there because it was a 9-9 round. I gave him that round with a point deduction 9-9. Had another good round last round. He's right back in this fight, Kenny. Fury with a headbutt losing a point in that last round. Let's check in with Chris. Nazim, how do you think that Steve's holding up? Doing well. He's a warrior. But they let a big man fight like this with his head and his elbow. He can beat anybody laying on him like that until you get him tired, then he do it his own. That's ridiculous. He's landing some pretty clean shots out there. What's he doing? Tyson is a big target, but he brings his elbows and he leans with his hands. So he lays on you and uses his weight against him. Steve got to keep taking angles on him. Thanks, Tyson. Thanks, Chris. What about the angle Steve is taking right now? Try, there's a nice little uppercut by Fury. They looked like they were about ready to be separated. No, it's real rough in there. And until the referee says break, you can't. You have to defend yourself. You saw Fury use that right forearm, and then he lands a right uppercut right after that. And Steve looks at the referee, but he's not getting any help. He's got to make sure he defends himself, and he's got to use his legs a little bit to get some space from Fury. And obviously, this is what everybody looked at when this fight started. Another strong right uppercut by Fury, and I just see the bigger man really taking control on the inside over these last three rounds. Fury's got to like how this fight's going now. The bigger man by 44 pounds and six inches in height. And that was the key. Would he be able to hold up against a quicker Steve Cunningham? What he's doing to take away that quickness, he's just putting his hands up and walking Steve down, getting him tired. Good body shot by Fury. I think Steve's a little hurt here, Kenny. That's a nice uppercut. Two of them in there. And Cunningham backing up just a bit. Yeah, Fury. Steve's almost done here. Look at this. Oh, uh, there's another cut and he's down. Cunningham is knocked down by Fury. Fury got the right in, and Cunningham is floored. He's hurt bad. You see him using that form. Six. I think Steve's done here, Seven. Ken. He's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, Eight. they need to stop this fight. Nine. This fight Ten. is over. Tyson Fury in his U.S. debut is undefeated, knocking out Cunningham in the seventh. But you see Fury using that forearm, using, being physical, pushing Steve off him, landing the punch after that. Very, very hard style to fight when he's being so physical like that. He was using the forearm to get the separation. He's a strong guy, and Steve was fading because of the physical presence of Tyson, and Tyson landed that big shot. We talked about the height advantage, the weight advantage. They were very aware of that in Cunningham corner. And Tyson Fury, 44 pounds heavier, kept working and working Steve Cunningham and finished him off here in the seventh round. And that's the type of performance that he said he had to have in America. Look, he battled through adversity, Kenny. He got dropped hard. He got hurt. He got up. He came back. He showed resilience. We thought he had it, but he proved it tonight that he's got resilience. And uh, he beat the smaller guy tonight in Steve Cunningham. Steve Cunningham has nothing to be ashamed of. He fought a great fight. Cunningham dropped Fury early in this fight. But Fury bounced back. And Fury kept getting stronger. Over the last three rounds, he was out slugging Cunningham 59 
to 53 and in power punches as well and this is the way it ends here in the seventh when he landed that right uppercut steve's in trouble you see him hurt a little bit right here another good right uppercut those are big punches and you see him using the left forearm getting separation holding steven measuring him to land that right uppercut and right hand again there it was that right uppercut that might have not looked like a very hard punch but in those close quarters steve was a little affected by that punch pushing him off gaining separation another short right uppercut holding his head and using it to measure him and uh, just a big punch from the much bigger guy. He outlanded Cunningham by 20 power punches over the last three rounds. Kept getting stronger and that finishes here in the seventh. And Steve was getting bullied on the inside and Tyson was starting to wear him down. He he used his game plan like he told us. He said, look, I'm the bigger guy. I'm going to show him I'm the bigger guy and I'm going to maul him. And, uh, you know, the spacing to land that punch was the key to white landed. That and left forearm was everything. Fury said, quote, if I can't shine now, forget it. There's his wife, Paris, and friends cheering on as Livy Cunningham looks as her husband goes to the canvas. But Fury said, if I don't do it now, it may be three or four more years. I want my shot at Klitschko soon. This now does put him to number two in the IBF rankings. Let's get the official time of the knockout and back to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 55 seconds of round number 7. Referee Eddie Cotton counts to 10. The winner by knockout victory, still undefeated. He is the heavyweight fighting pride of Manchester, Tyson Fury. Wife Paris, they've been together since teenagers. And Tyson Fury, a big man with a big agenda. They said he had to do it in a big place, Madison Square Garden, New York, to make his U.S. debut. And he does with a knockout of Steve Cunningham in the seventh. And we take a look at the total punches in this. And they kept building up as this fight went along for Tyson Fury. He got much stronger in the last couple of rounds as opposed to Cunningham in the total punches. Yeah, he did. He's just a very big physical guy. And we've never seen him here in the States before, so we weren't familiar with his style, but he showed. He can get up from adversity. Steve Cunningham, not known as the biggest puncher, but still had enough to drop Fury. Fury gets up and continues to apply pressure until Steve Cunningham breaks. And the power punches, the bulk of those came over a four-round period for Fury, especially the last couple of rounds, finishing it off with that knockout in the seventh. Yeah, he did. And you know, the first couple rounds, he was strictly with his jab. The last three or four rounds, Kenny, he really showed us he can walk a smaller guy down and uh, do the job. So you got to give props to Tyson Fury for a victory over a two-time world champion, Steve Cunningham. Let's go now to the winner and standing by Chris Mannix. Chris. Well, Tyson already wants to talk. Tyson, congratulations. Didn't go exactly according to game plan, but how do you feel about the way you fought tonight? You know, it's one of them things that, um, you come over, you cannot go swimming and not get wet. This is a fight. A fight, and a fight it was. And Cunningham put up a good fight, but he lost to the better fighter on the night. Congratulations, Steve Cunningham. Big clap. Come on. Come on, people. Show your appreciation for an absolute war of a fight. Tyson, let's take a look at the monitor at some of the bigger moments of the fight. We'll start off in the first round. Tell us what you see here. Oh, I see Tyson Fury looking super sexy as usual. Gave him a little shove there. A little, little uh, shove of encouragement. Now, this is the knockdown here. Yeah. First knock. Well, what happened there? Yeah, uh, I slipped. No. <laughs> I got caught with a big swinging right hand. Um, and you don't see him coming, you go down, but you got to get back up. Got caught again there. You know what it is? This is a learning experience, but you know, many are picked and few are chosen. And the Lord Jesus Christ has given me the ability to come back, fight, win fights, get knocked down. I am the ultimate fight. Here's, here's, here's where you start to make some. Here's where you start to land some big shots. A good big and will always beat a good little one. And that was a good up to the side of the jaw. When did you feel you had control in this fight? All the way through, really. It was a matter of time until I, I got hold of him. And Lennox Lewis once said, "You can run, but you can't hide." This kid was running around the ring after he got hit with a few shots. And you know, when I caught him, it was curtains. As I said, I'd like to. Um, Thank this New York crowd, and in order to do so, in order, can I get the microphone for a minute? People, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and supporting Tyson Fury. 
Thank you very much. God bless America, and thank you very much. In order, I'd like to sing a little song for you all, right here in the ring. And here we go. I'm not just a boxer. Let's do it. He was sitting beside me in the passenger seat As I walked through the wishing had a quiet little street He was smiling so proudly as he gave me the key But inside I knew he was as nervous as me I sing daddy, oh daddy, are you sure I know how? Are you sure that I'm ready to drive this car around? He said, I'm right here beside you when you're gonna be fine. <laughs> All you gotta do is keep it between the lines. Thank you, people! <laughs> Thank you, Tyson. Kenny? Uh, all right, Chris, and who knew a concert was going to happen? We'll go to our judge, Larry Hazard, and see how he scored the singing on that one in a minute. I don't know, BJ, what did you think about the singing? Not as impressive as the knockout. You know, we need to focus on the fight, Kenny, because we're here on the Fight Night Series, and the fight was very impressive. The singing, not so much, but he's a charismatic guy. He's a good addition to the heavyweight division. It's nice to have him over here and, uh, you know, making his debut. And he is number two now in the IBF with that victory over Steve Cunningham. A very tough Steve Cunningham, as always, the former two-time cruiserweight champ in this, his third fight as a heavyweight. And being knocked out here by Tyson Fury. Let's go to Chris. Steve, you fought a great fight early on. Just seemed to get caught at the end. What happened out there? Just uh, uh, him putting his weight on me. You know, he, um, he fought like a big man. You know, he put his weight on me. I'm much smaller. And he just kept leaning on me and leaning on me. And it's like I'm fighting two people. You know, I got to fight to get him off me and then throw my punches. And, uh, I mean, he caught me. He caught me in the clinch. You know, uh, he come out with this wild shot. He's six foot nine. You know, he's a giant. He's got power. You know, especially over me. I'm only six foot three, but man, I was just dazed. I was dazed. You know, and freaking couldn't make the count. Man. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here. Starting early on, what happened there at the end when he knocked put you down? Well, I think he caught me here with that right hook. I mean, he, he, you see him lean me up, he pushed me up, and he threw the punch. That's illegal, but, I mean, he did what a big man's supposed to do to a smaller guy, lean on him, you know, and, and put his weight on him. And, and I started getting a little winded in the end. That's what made me stop a lot more, but, I mean, whatever, man. He won, you know, whatever. Thanks, Steve. Thank you, guys. Kenny? All right. Thank you, Chris. And uh, Steve Cunningham summed it up. The big man Tyson Fury taking advantage of that 44-pound weight advantage, pushing him, shoving him, and knocking him down here in the seventh round to stay unbeaten. And when we come back, 